We hear it all the time, constantly, Harry Kane, will he stay, will he go? Never hear it from Son, why not? I mean, they've done brilliantly. Daniel Levy has tied him down to a very long contract. So I don't think there's any chance of him ever leaving. He seems like he's happy at the football club, and why shouldn't he? You know, they put him on the map. He was good at Hamburg. He played Leverkusen. You know, he's been out in Germany. He's come to the Premier League. He took to it like a duck to water. He's absolutely fantastic. He's, he's a pleasure to be a Tottenham fan when you've got a player like that in your squad. And a player, every single day he goes in there, he's got a lot of... Um, experience around the younger players. He gives them all the encouragement. They all look up to him. He's a leader within that group. That's what you need. You need them people at your football club. He's a credit. Well played. Sonny, you're the hat-trick hero, but does the captain deserve a big bit of credit, a big pat on the back for his saves in that first half? 100%, 100%, I think. Um, without Hugo, we really struggled you know, in the first half. He saved us in the game today, I think. Probably he's the winner today, and uh, I'm really grateful having this captain um, <laughs> uh, next side of me. Well, there's a lot of credit for you here, go. It was busy though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's the first time since uh, Antonio Conte took the, the team that uh, we conceded uh, so many chances. Uh, it was a tough uh, battle, uh, as we expected. Uh, I think we started really well the, the, the game with this goal, and, and then they started to, you know, to, to increase the intensity. Uh, we could not match. Uh, we lost a lot of jewels and we conceded a lot of chance. But uh, you know, uh, after the storm, uh, we took the, the control in the second half, and and then with the quality that we have in front, uh, players like uh, Kulu, like Harry, like Sonny, uh, they can make the difference at any moment, and and they did uh, very well. And very pleased for Sonny with this hat trick. <laughs> so what was said at half time? Did you know? Did you suspect they might run out of steam, or was it actually quite a, an unhappy dressing room? No, we were not happy with the performance. Uh, obviously, uh, the manager as well. Uh, he tried to to correct a few things, uh, especially in front of our defence, to to avoid uh, to concede too much space uh, for Coutinho. Um, and then, obviously, we we increase uh, you know the quality with the ball. Uh, we took the control of the game, uh, ball in the feet, and um, and then we heard them. We heard them at, at key moments, and um, and we are very pleased with with these three points. <laughs> Sorry, I remember you scoring the winning goal here with a broken arm once, and it, it wasn't quite like that today, but it was very physical, wasn't it? Especially first half. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously what Hugo said, uh, we scored early goal, obviously we thought like uh, we're going to control this game, and we knew we knew it's going to be a tough, tough game, and there was such a good quality team and quality players. So first half, we, we are really busy, and we struggled really, really, and... But you know, sometimes when we have this tough, t uh, tough time, we need to stick together, which is what we did. And obviously, we knew second half is going to be more spaces. We need to be calm, and we knew we can we can do better than what we done in the first half. So and second half, and with uh, with Kulu that uh, scored early goal, I think to finish the game. I mean, we always talk about you and Harry, don't we? Always. But we should talk about Kulusevski as well. The three of you. Why is that working so well at the moment? Um, I think because we're working, working hard, and uh, we. We see the clips while we uh, every after every single game. So we analyze uh, every single situation, which which situation we can do better, and we are talking about a lot as well. So I think we are, it's all about understanding. Obviously, first time when we play all together, it wasn't that perfect. So I think we're still not perfect, but uh, we are improving every single day. We're enjoying uh, enjoying playing together. Third hat trick ball for Tottenham, I think. You got a little space in the house for them. Uh, yeah, a lot of space, a lot of space. <laughs> I wish uh, there's many more, many more to come and obviously I'm really happy to get three points. Uh, more than more than the last goal, three, three goals. And lastly, we should say, Hugo, it's been a good day all round, hasn't it? I'm sure you went into the match aware Manchester United had lost, Arsenal had lost as well. Yeah, but it was really important to start the game with a cool uh, mind, you know. Uh, I think it's really important in this final race to, to stay focused on ourselves. Obviously, the results uh, were good for us, but uh, we could not um, lose this opportunity. And, uh, and, you know, after a very bad first half, uh, we can enjoy uh, uh, the performance in the second half and we can enjoy the, the, the three points and then uh, ready next week for, for another battle. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Big performance at both ends of the pitch and that second half performance is really what surprised us all from Tottenham. We didn't see it coming after that first half, did we, Tim? No, but that's not a bad thing, Zim. You know, as a manager, you, you, like Antonio had been really disappointed with the first half performance. And he would have gone and said what he had to say in the, in the second half. He would expect Filler to come out with the towels up because Hugo Lloris has kept Tottenham in the game. 
but they still were leading the game. So it just keep fight. We got the firepower, he would be saying. We need to get the ball up to Kulusevski, to Harry Kane, get it to Son, and they won't be able to cope. And that's exactly what happened. Defensively, they were all over the place. And they went pretty much direct. You know, when we see the goals, they're pretty much direct long balls up to Harry Kane. He was finding Sonny with headers. Kulisevsky was holding the game up as well. They were breaking. As soon as one of them comes deep, gets hold of the ball, the other two are just making runs beyond. And they were very solid in behind it. It was a good all-round team performance today. First half was poor, but it's brilliant when you can turn it around and put a put a stylish performance on in the second period. He'd be delighted with it. Yeah, and they did get that goal very early on, didn't they? And that, after that, they weren't at their very best Spurs, were, but then Villa came back and dominated. But this early goal was important for Spurs. Well, like Tim just said, they went direct and it's a long ball from, from Dyer. It's a poor header from Konsa. No one's there picking up that first ball. It falls to Kane. No one's picking up that first ball, second ball to Son. And you just punished. And, and like Tim said, there's three forwards there that if you give them an inch, they, they're ruthless. You know, that's a fantastic finish. So the goalkeeper's got no chance, but you've got to defend better. Mm. You know, it's not like they've played through. It's not like they've popped you. It's the same. Another direct ball. It's a flick on. No one's picking up the runner's son and he's through. It's a 1v1. What does it result in? Back of the net. He's not going to miss from there, but it's not like they've pulled. I mean, the look from Kane, just to know that his strike is going to be there with him, but it's not like they've popped and, and sometimes mm. just hold your hand up. It's poor defending from Villa. Got long direct ball. You have to read those, but take nothing away from, from that man there. He's clinical. That understanding between Kane and Son has just been such a joy to watch as well. It's almost telepathic, isn't it? And, and this boy's joining in as well, isn't he? You know, Kulisevsky's getting in support. He's always got a good touch. Seems to pick the right pass at the right time. You know, he's holding on to it. He's always looking up. He, he decides to cut back. No, Harry makes a run in there. Sorry, I'm going to give it to your mate, Son. And that's the hat trick. Brilliant. Brilliant play there from Kulisevsky. He takes his time. He's never hurried. He plays at his own pace. You know, he gives you the ball when he's finished with it. And uh, he gives Sonny one on the plate there for his hat trick. But absolutely outstanding. When you've got clinical finishes like Son in your side, you don't have to play well to win football matches. Special moment for Son with his third hat trick for Tottenham. And actually, he's closing in on that golden boot, isn't he? Because he's not too far off Mo Salah. Yeah. Salah with 20 goals, Son with 17. And if you take away penalties, actually, Son would be top goal scorer. It's unbelievable. Um, I think Tottenham this calendar year have top Premier League goal scorers. So, um, and it's no credit, you know, Son is absolutely on fire. And you see today, just big chances, mm. no hesitation. You, you pretty much... He's going through one on one. I'm like, it's gone before he's even hit it. You're that confident in him. And when you've got that in your team, but he, he, he in the back of his mind, he'd be going, I'm three off Salah. I'm three off here and I'm going to go for it. And when you've got Harry Kane, it'll just pick you out. You know, he can pretty much mm. put, he's, uh, close his eyes and he knows where he is. You've got a great chance of catching him. And then you mentioned, of course, add to the mix, Kulusevski, part of that front mm. three. Are you impressed with how quickly he settled in? Amazing. I mean, I can't tell you how difficult it is to play in the Premier League. And, and for a foreign player to come over, sometimes you've got, I've had some superstars who come over from abroad and have been absolutely rubbish in the Premier League. But this boy has seemed to, you know, he's like, he took it to a, like a duck to water. He's 21 years of age. They've got an option to buy him at 29 million. Now, when he first came here at 29 million, when he hadn't played, you think, well, might be a lot of money. It is an absolute snip at the moment. This boy's got an eye for a goal. He's settled in with world-class players up front of him in Son and Kane. I mean, he's enjoying his time there. Without doubt, they're going to trigger the option at the end of the season. I think if they leave it another year, another season, then I think the price goes up somewhat. He's 21 years of age. He's an asset to the football club. He will only get better. He's been absolutely outstanding. We have to give Antonio Conte, Paratici, the, well, yeah. the, the sporting director. Because he came under in. criticism, didn't he, at the beginning? Because they thought, oh, he's just gone to the club he knows, brought in a couple of players yeah. last minute. But it's worked out pretty no, well. It's not about how much you spend on players. I keep saying it. It's about who you bring in. You know, it's 29 million. It's the cup of tea. It's nothing in the Premier League now. It's an expensive now. cup of tea. It's expensive. <laughs> it's a round of drinks. It's, it's nothing compared to what we've seen 
other clubs waste on players. Exactly. That is an absolute snip. But they found him. They know him. They trust in him. And they brought him to the club and they knew he could settle into that. And he settled in so quickly. And Benton Kerr's getting better by every game as well. He's not set the world alight at the moment, but I can see there's something there. He's going to be a very good player as well. That's, that's the thing, though. That, you know, your West Ham they had a good opportunity to recruit in the window in January. They didn't. Man United, half a billion, half a billion over the last number of years. Arsenal, credit to Spurs. They've gone and got, got rid of four got two in and you go in, turn, they could get Champions League now. So you're spot on, like between the best and the others that are going for it, they've had the best window and it's no coincidence they're now higher momentum and flying. And you can imagine with Benton and Kulusevski having more time under the likes of Antonio yeah. Conte, this team could be a force to be reckoned with. Well, let's head straight back to Villa Park and get more reaction. But this time from the Villa boss here is Stephen Gerrard. Well, Stephen, the score says 4-0. How on earth do you start to explain that? Yeah, it's tough. It's difficult. I think the scoreline's certainly harsh on us, um, but it's the reality, and we have to accept that. I have to accept it. Obviously, I'm responsible for it, so we'll do that. But the story of the game certainly we're in a four-nil game. Um, it's the first time in football I've gone off a half-time and been trailing and being really proud and really happy. With the first half performance, I thought we were magnificent. It's the best we've played since I've come in the club. Um, we never took our chances, if you're being ultra critical. But at half time, I said to the boys, look, if we can continue this, I've got no doubt we'll at least get back into the game. Um, but the second half, the game flipped, and um, Tottenham's quality players made it about our back line, and they punished us heavily. The back line played its part early on as well. Giving a lead to the opposition again happens again. Yeah, listen, obviously, um, analysing the first goal, it's a long, straight ball. We, we could have defended the, the first contact better. We should have more bodies around the second ball. They get a little bit of luck off Matty Cash with the block, but they're ruthless in front of goal. Um, but to be 1-0 down at half-time was certainly against the run of play because it was so dominant for 45 minutes. Everything we asked, everything we asked of the boys in terms of the game plan, we were outstanding. Uh, the chances we've created against the top side, uh, we created enough first half to win two or three games. Um, we asked for them to maintain that, and, and look, we, we, we tried to do that, but um, we, we talk in this club about defending the red zone, which is the emergency zone around your 18-yard your box. Um, Tottenham punished us heavily in that red zone today. It's a totally different scenario to last weekend's defeat. Is it harder to lift players after this sort of defeat or that sort of defeat? Well, look, we've got time. Um, I'm not sure that's a good thing. I think after a defeat, a stinging one like that, that maybe you don't deserve to be on the end of. You want the next game to come pretty quickly, but um, it is what it is. Um, I've got to pick the players up. That's my job. We will do. We'll be ready for the next challenge in a couple of weeks. Um, but, I mean, our first half performance today, um, I want us to remember that because that's how I want it to look consistently. And when we do, we'll become a really good team. But we've got a lot to learn. And... Um, Defensively in the second half, we've got even more to learn. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you mentioned that first half, and any manager, I'm sure, Tim, would have been so delighted with that first half. It was a very Stephen Gerrard-esque first half performance, wasn't it, with yeah. the passion and with the fight. So what changed so drastically in the second half? Well, I think you have to give Tottenham credit uh, for it. Uh, obviously, the intensity dropped off. They wasn't able, you asked me the question, can they maintain it? I thought because of that, that home crowd on their side, they would have been able to. They, they couldn't. They couldn't handle the, the three world-class players in Tottenham's forward line, they could not handle that and they couldn't break it through in the end. Fouled, couldn't get the ball into Coutinho who was making them tick in the first half um, and they lacked any sort of penetration. As much as he, and I said it at half-time, he'd be delighted going in there. The only disappointment was the scoreline but he would be de absolutely delighted with the way his team played but he'd be equally disappointed the way they capitulated in the second half and I thought they were very poor in the second half. I thought that after... Tottenham come out and scored early in the second period. They down tools somewhat. And that's certainly not Steven Gerrard. But what we did make the point. Now, between now and the end of the season, he's learning about this group of players, which ones he wants to keep, who, who wants to come on the journey with him. Because he's going nowhere. He's authentic. When you look at him, you, I believe him. When he talks to me, I believe him through that screen. And when he's face to face with you and he's talking to them players, they also believe him and they need to stand up and they need to listen. They're lucky, some of them, to be at a big club like Aston Villa. If they want to continue to be there, 
then they need to pull their socks up. And they're certainly lucky to have a manager like Steven Gerrard that they can learn so much from. Yeah, I mean, sometimes in football, as an attacking player, you have those off days where you have chance after chance after chance. You defend right, you don't concede four. If in your attacking third, everything's, everything's going everywhere, you don't concede four at home. It, it, that's criminal, you know. They had a, the, some of the defending was poor. Like I said, if you get popped by a team and they play through you and they hands down are just a better side, but the goals, the four goals they conceded today were really yeah. poor. It's like first balls, second balls, positions of players. That would be, for me, yeah. would be the frustrating thing because sometimes putting the ball in the back of the net from when it's not going is the hardest thing in the world. But you have a clean sheet mentality and, and that was a difference today. They have, Tottenham have got three fantastic world-class players, but I still think they could have defended those situations a lot better, and I think that's where they felt a short today. Absolutely. I, I just think they drew... You're absolutely right what you say, Karen. They never popped it around them, never mesmerised them into the passing patterns. It was straightforward. Konza and Mings are not good enough. On that, what we see today, now they might have had, like, I don't think Mings is good enough anyway. I think Konza's had some good games, and the consistency level is just not there. Mm. They need to find defenders and they need, or they need to improve the ones they've got. They're still capable of improving. I think Stevie could work with them, make them better, give them a little bit more cover in front. Um, but at the moment, if you're asking, if you want to move up the level in the Premier League, you need defenders who can defend on their own. Those two centre-halves cannot defend on their own. They need to be covered up. And Villa actually have a really poor record against teams starting the day in the top six. They've lost all 10 of those games. Speaking of those top six, seven teams... Tottenham, this is where they find themselves, yep. fourth in the Premier League table. How important was today's result in that race for Champions League? It was massive because you saw Arsenal drop points, Man United drop, drop points. And what's interesting, I think Spurs play the next game first. So psychologically, if they win that, before anyone kicks off, they're already at a huge advantage. So for me, it's psychologically great. They're scoring goals, they're keeping, they kept a clean sheet today, um, you know, and also, look at it, out of the teams that are kind of in the mix for that fourth spot for Champions League, who would I want in my dressing room as my manager to make sure I would get that fourth spot? And it would be, it would be Conte. 